What is going on, Pro Guides family? It is your host, Sergeant Frost, and boy, is episode four starting off hot. The leaks and info drops on all the new stuff we're getting just keeps on coming. And today, we've got some news updates on what in-game changes we know are coming in the start of episode four. Apart from the new bundle, the new battle pass coming along, Neon's release, and Yoru's rework looming on the horizon, we've got some in-game changes to ranked as well as some weapon and map changes. So let's not waste any more time and jump right into it. For our first ranked update of the year, we are getting some new changes to the rank requirements for new accounts. Instead of the old system where you needed 10 wins to play ranked, you now instead need your account to be level 20 in order to play ranked. This seems like a direct response to the smurf account problem we currently have going on in ranked. A lot of players have complained that smurfs have been ruining the ranked experience in the lower ranks for quite some time now. Riot may not have the answer to stop this problem completely, as it is hard to get a true grip on, but this seems like a nice response to possibly make it harder to get newer accounts into ranked quickly. It also helps newer players because forcing them to play more unrated games to level up their account more will help them get the experience they need before jumping into the ultra competitive world of ranked play, where the vibe is definitely more serious and sometimes toxic. But hey, we're not 100% sure that this will curb the issues, so let us know what you guys think about this in the comments section down below. And while you're at it, if you're looking to climb further in rank than you ever have before this coming episode, you won't want to miss out on the best opportunity to learn from the best. To start off the new year, we've collaborated with the pro legend Sentinel Zombs to host a boot camp where he'll teach you the ins and outs of climbing ranked and how to transform yourself into a carry. So before you talk about the rank changes, make sure to click the link in the description and sign up because spots are filling up fast. Beyond the rank changes that were leaked, we've got quite a few gun change leaks to start off the new episode as well, so let's dive in. First off, the Spectre has been nerfed in regards to shooting at long ranges. The Spectre has been the poster boy for running and gunning issues in Valorant for quite some time now. While these range changes don't really help with curbing any of that, this change at least forces it to be good at what it's meant to be good at, which is close to medium range spraying. To be fair, the Spectre was a little too easy to control even at longer distances, which made it quite strong even at long ranges for players who could burst comfortably with this gun. Next up, the Guardian is getting some nice changes to make it feel smoother to use when aiming down sights. The Guardian ADS shooting speed is now the same speed as the non-ADS shooting speed. This potential buff is nice because I know a lot of avid Guardian users who like to ADS with it to take advantage of its extra zoom distance. This is a nice quality of life buff to the Guardian, but it doesn't seem to make it particularly stronger or anything like that. Overall, it should be a gun that suits its niche and not much more. The Ares is getting a substantial buff that might make it easier to get consistent kills with. The Ares spin up time has been removed, and its fire rate has been increased from 10 to 13. The Ares has been in the gutters for a very long time, and it hasn't gotten a lot of attention at all from the devs. This potential buff could make it a lot more viable as a low economy weapon, as one of its most glaring weaknesses was its slower fire rate and its dreaded spin up time that made it hard to kill enemies on contact. Although I would say that this only applies to making the Ares more viable at higher ranks, these changes make the Ares subjectively better, and I bet some players who like this gun are licking their lips as we speak. These Ares buffs looks like it can help out the gun quite a bit, so it'll be interesting to see what the outcome is. Hopefully it doesn't become an issue though. Okay, so for some reason it seems like Riot has been keeping track of the balance of melee weapons, and they've deemed it too weak to be used I guess. The right click melee hitbox has been increased by 1.5 times, and the left click is also larger than the right click and also has longer range, which means it can be used to close the distance. Personally, I don't know what to say because from my perspective, I always thought the knife was just a gimmick that's meant to humiliate your opponents, but it looks like Riot has some other plans and are trying to give the knife a specific niche or perhaps more usability. Off the top of my head, the one thing that I can imagine that will become more viable is definitely knifing through an astral wall, because now you can reach further and have more room for error. Moving on to map changes, we've got a few changes to some sites that can really change up attacker and defender strategies on Bind and Breeze. Bind is getting a cool upgrade in its A bomb site area. In a short, the old wooden boxes that every smoker uses to create one ways has been replaced with a short hop up area that's half the height of the old boxes. This new box has stairs that allow you to easily climb on top of it, which creates a cool new angle kind of like the one off boxes in the grass area of Haven. Does this change fix Bind's attacking choke point problems? It's hard to say. But, changing terrain to give attackers a better fighting chance against defenders who are posted up is always an interesting change that could shift the balance a little. For Breeze, we also have some A site and B site changes that really can shake up the strategies for going in and the angles available. The biggest change in my opinion is on A site, where the back area of A site is not all covered in water, making it much more open to move around and play. The double boxes that used to be spammable are now gone as well, which means that position is stronger for defenders trying to hold off attackers. Also, triple boxes got changed substantially, and there's now ample cover to play behind instead of being forced to kind of jiggle left and right and pray people don't accidentally spam you. 
And finally, there's a change on the left side of eight caves, where the tiny corner you could hide in is now revamped so that you have a big corner to reset and not feel like you're at risk of getting killed immediately. It's deeper too, so it's harder to clear. Oh, and there's also a double stack of boxes in the cave as well to hide behind. On B site, there is now a double stack of boxes next to the half wall, which gives defenders more room to work with. Backside now has an extended wall, and the pillar also has a stone block covering the plant from mid-nest it seems. Overall, this gives defenders a lot more options while also giving attackers some more room to secure space on site for a plan. And that's pretty much all we really know about the big episode 4 patch so far. But as we continue on, we can probably expect to hear more from the leaks or from the official teasers from Riot. This episode 4 start is looking to change up a whole lot of stuff in game. And if you're trying to keep up, don't forget to like and subscribe so you'll always be up to date on the latest Valorant news, updates, and guides. This has been your host Sergeant Frost, and good luck in episode 4.